right, it's time for us to go through the pages, the front pages of the National Dailies. We have some interesting headlines uh, on the front pages uh, of uh, National Dailies today. And I'm um, glad to say we have uh, Tunde Kola, a legal practitioner who is a, a weekly guest on Off the Press this morning. Uh, Tunde Kola, nice to have you this morning. Good morning. All right, uh, we, we will uh, try to reconnect with Tunde Kolaole as soon as possible. Let's get into um, the, the headlines this morning. We start with the leadership um, that has its big, its lead story. Uh, INEC exonerates staff over PVCs dumped in streets. And there have been some videos, some trending videos. Um, we can verify the authenticity of these videos, but it's shown uh, ID cards uh, allegedly... PVCs, it's a permanent voter cards. People have been seeing in gutters, in parts of River State, on the streets, in Enugu State, in gutters, in Lagos State, and they've been filming videos uh, putting them on the internet. We don't know if these are authentic uh, ID cards or not, but uh, the leadership says INEC exonerates staff over PVCs dumped in streets, the riders to that headline, Political party CSOs as commissioned to unravel mystery vow to ensure effective monitoring of 2023 elections. Elections will hold next year, military assures uh, Nigerians. More from the leadership. How military, DSS, others arrested or were church attackers, like we said earlier in our top trending segment. Uh, toll collection fueling traffic on a Papa tin can port access road is coming from the shippers council. Reps summon finance minister over subsidy payment. We have given 100 billion naira to indigenous pharma manufacturers, PMB. Lawan Akpabio, not senatorial candidates. There was a story alleging in one of the online news websites alleging that the Independent National Electoral Commission had you know, backdated the, uh, the result sheets or the forms of some of these candidates who the earlier said didn't qualify to stand election as senatorial candidates. Um, the commission is coming back to say that uh, they are not senatorial candidates. Kenya 2022, Odinga Ruto in tight race for president. It seems that uh, for those who are watching the Kenyan elections, uh, it is between Raila Odinga and uh, William Ruto, the vice or deputy uh, president. And it seems it's uh, really too close to call as far as the 2022 Kenyan elections are concerned. Seplat Exxon Mobil deal rejection based on PIA provisions. That's coming from NUPRC. All right, let's move on to the next paper. The Nation has uh, interesting uh, headlines, but it's sticking with the OWO church attack, and it says five suspects, one accomplice, held over OWO church attack. Uh, right up to that, Irabo. Nigeria does not need mercenaries. We have been trailing attackers, says Akiri Dolu. All right, uh, more from the nation. I can sway Rivers voters, WK boasts. Atiku not interested in genuine truce, say governor's men. Atiku not interested in genuine truce, say governor's men. It's been all action right there in River State. There's some people who know about these things who believe that the governor has already made uh, his decision to join the APC. Indeed, there's a tweet uh, put out on an account that uh, it says it's the governor's Twitter account where he put up a picture of himself and uh, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Samolu, who was in River State a couple of days ago to commission a new flyover. Uh, and he put a caption to that picture. City boys is what Wiki said. Yeah. All right. Um, Nigeria can't afford another civil war, Buhari tells politicians, President preaches unity. Senate orders uh, Nimasa to explain $5 million payment to law firm. It's a lot of money. Uh, FIRS demands one trillion naira tax remittance from MDAs. Interesting. Uh, they're not smiling at all. 15 states fail to implement 30 minimum, 30,000 naira minimum wage for teachers. Uh, RCCG ordains over 15,000 ministers at 70th convention, I saw uh, someone I knew back in the university uh, who was uh, celebrating being on, ordained a deacon in the RCCG. It's quite interesting, and uh, the ongoing uh, 70th 
convention holding right there at the Redemption Camp. And on the State Assembly declares two seats vacant. We wish them all the best. Those are the headlines on the front page of the nation, which costs 200 naira. It's interesting to see maybe inflation is not affecting the papers. <laughs> you can see. All right, let's move on to the next uh, paper, The Punch. Uh, sticks with Wike and the Tiku. And the headline then on the front page of The Punch this morning, it says Wike's romance with Tidibu's men rattles Amechi's base. And I was, I was asking myself, and I probably put it online um, this morning, and what happens if Wike, uh, as it's been rumored, joins the APC? What, what, what scenario will it be? Will the Amechi men be chased away? Um, so questions to be asked. Uh, uh, the good man, Roti Michi, because Amechi, uh, had some things to say when one of his strong men uh, celebrated his 60th birthday over the weekend, talking about uh, when in that Wali. Um, Wiki was in that, in that uh, at a church service, and uh, I think uh, it was an interesting one to see. Uh, River City politics is quite, uh, quite, 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 really, really active, really hot, and it's getting hotter as the elections uh, draw closer. So what happens? If yes, when Wiki joins the APC, um, what will happen to Amici's men, and indeed the structure and the hold of um, the former Minister of Transportation on the All Progressives Congress. It's an interesting time. So the punch says, Wiki's romance with Atinabu's men rattles Amici's base. Uh, the writers to that story, Wiki desperate uh, for alliance with Tinubu. Uh, it says, words uh, wants protection after 2023. This is what Rivers APC is saying. So already they're attacking him. Uh, a wiki desperate for alliance with Tinubu wants protection after 2023. Amechi unhappy about Abe's closeness to Tinubu, says ex minister, says ex minister's associate and Rivers governor uh, free to join APC Shitu. A wiki articles loyalist trade blame. It's all action in River State. It's something that uh, will take some while to unpack, uh, but deserves it, its own attention uh, for a full discussion. More from the punch. Reps summon finance minister over subsidy query or query NNPC. Reps summon finance minister over subsidy query NNPC. Settle with ASU now, vice chancellor's beg FG. Diesel hike NRC reduces legal, legacy battle trips by 67%. FG inaugurates cancel to revive agile Kuta others. Nigeria spends 82.2%. 0.35 billion naira on foreign importation report. Nigeria spends 82.35 billion naira on foreign importation. More from the punch. FG issues 1.9 million passports, inaugurates a production center. Um, are some of the, um, the headlines on the front page of uh, Punch. The rest have been covered by other papers and we touched on them. Let's go to the final paper. Very quickly, the Daily Trust has these headlines. Presidency, NU. PRC Fracker puts $1.2 billion separate ExxonMobil deal in limbo. The right, president has said he's approved it. They can go ahead. Um, but this is what the paper is saying this morning. Presidency NU PRC Fracker puts $1.28 billion separate ExxonMobil deal in limbo. Right as to that headline, how PIA and PAS commission on business deals, why we oppose president's approval, regulator, it's interesting to see the regulator saying they oppose the president's uh, approval. Parties must follow regulations. Experts uh, are the writers to that story. Ma from the uh, Daily Trust allow attacks on national assets, NB sanctions, NSCDC, CG warns commandants. He called them for a meeting in Abuja. Um, the NSCDC has been seemed to be now the de facto intelligence agency in the country with the security reports they've been giving uh, uh, in concerning Abuja and other parts of the country. More from Daily Trust. Republicans react as FBI raids Trump's Florida home. Republicans react as FBI raids Trump's Florida home. That's uh, the popular mar a -Lago in Florida. Uh, residents camper for safety as bandits strike in Katsina Metropolis. And you wonder if a day will go by without such stories uh, gracing the front pages of the papers. Atiku, Wike's dispute stalls composition of PDP campaign cancel. The party is lagging behind the other parties, uh, especially the, the APC, 
in uh, deciding who will head the campaign cancel. Candidate considers marking day tambour for DG post. I can perform well in or out of PDP, Rivers Governor. The governor is already believing, uh, insinuating or saying that um, Rivers people will vote against enemies of Rivers State. But it's, the question remains, will the governor go from polling booth to polling booth to know um, who people are voting for? All right, uh, a final one from the Daily Trust. Oil subsidy, reps summon finance minister, uh, give one week ultimatum. Uh, we'd like to welcome at this point, uh, once again, our guest analyst on of the press, uh, Tunde Kolawole, legal practitioner. Uh, Mr. Kolawole, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. Right. What are your thoughts on this uh, Seplat ExxonMobil deal? It seems that it's not all um, yet in the clear as the regulator and, of course, the NUPRC is still talking and opposing the president's um, express approval of this deal. Louder, please. Louder. I didn't get that. All right. What are your thoughts on the, the ExxonMobil Sepla deal? I'm not quite a breath of that okay, story. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, let's take another story. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come to that in a jiffy. I'll give you the details maybe later um, as we go on. Uh, in River State, it's um, still a war of words, or let's say a cold war, uh, a battle for the soul of the PDP in River State with... Um, uh, and indeed, in the country, with the Wiki camp and the Atiku camp still at daggers drawn, and it seems that this is affecting the composition of the party's campaign council, as the uh, Daily Trust has told us. The APC has already completed the formation of its campaign council uh, with uh, Simon Lalong as a DG, uh, but for the PDP, it's just still talking. Nobody has been appointed apart from the spokesman, namely uh, Daniel Buala, and uh, Dino Melaya. So what are your thoughts on the current state of affairs in the People's Democratic Party? Well, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that um, there isn't much difference between the APC and the PTP. All the two political parties are not based on uh, any rigid ideological uh, uh, disposition. The two parties appear to me to be Republican in nature, capitalist-oriented, so if you find a politician moving from APC to PDP or from PDP to APC, it shouldn't be a shocking thing or a strange thing to anybody. Secondly, you and I do know the disposition of the average Nigerian politicians to the political parties. They see political parties as mere structures uh, for the realization or a kind of vehicle for the realization of their political ambition. That is why they find it too easy, too smoothly, to move from one political party to the other. With regard to Wiki, it is shocking, and I consider it very embarrassing, that he has been behaving like a jilted old woman since he knows the presidential uh, uh, primaries of the PDP, and since Alaji Atiku Abubakar has refused to pick him as a, as a running mate. I would think that if he were to be a statesman, if he knew the implication of what he is doing, he would queue up, he would align himself, he will uh, subscribe to whatever the wishes and aspirations of Alaji Atiku was, and whatever disposition his political party may have towards him. I say this because we can see a very young man, Alaji Atiku is about 25 years old, the implication of that is that um, we can see has all the opportunities in life. God give him uh, a good health and long life. So still become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That he doesn't require to continue to rock the boat the way he has been running, rocking it. And you must realize that uh, when you behave like a prostitute, the way he is behaving, nobody will ever get to trust you again. If he had done what he did to Atiku Awaka and to his political party, the PDP, the APC may merely take him in, use him to win the 2023 election, but thereafter, they will drop him like a hot uh, potato yeah, because they will never get to trust him and they will never get to put him in a very uh, strong position in which he will have the wherewithal to start challenging whatever authorities and structure the APC may also put online. As to what is going to happen, or the fact that before Rotimi Amichi 
if we can eventually cross to the APC. I'm not too sure that um, Erotime Amici has any base in, uh, in this state. Wiki has contested the election against him, so to say, two times now. And he has been, with Rotimi Amici presenting his own candidate. And Rotimi Amici has lost, I mean, most of the seats in the Senate, in the House of Rep, in the Senate Assembly. They are controlled by weakest men, or weakest men that lost. The crossing over of uh, weakest to APC will merely send the political debt of uh, Erotimi Amici, if he's not very, very careful, except he himself will jump the boat and then uh, maybe cross carpet again and go to the PDP party, which he used to belong to uh, initially. The truth of the matter, however, is that we as Nigerians should not encourage the kind of thing that um, the APC is doing. And the APC, too, we know them for the dissident. Uh, sooner than later, the whip that is used to flood or to trash the first wife or the oldest wife will sooner than later be wielded against the younger wife. The APC will also teach him a lesson sooner than later if he continues to behave like a bull in the China we are so sure. Nobody, nobody, I repeat, will appreciate or like the kind of things who are in authority that Wiki is doing. Would Wiki have tolerated any of his own subordinates, any of his own commissioners, any senator in the state to start behaving to him the way he's been behaving to a larger people and to his political party? The answer is no. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Uh, to the call, uh, in, in, in events Thank in you. River State have really attracted atten attention. Um, uh, Atiko Bubakaru's men in, in River State, if you look at the um, the headlines on the front page of uh, the, the Punch uh, newspaper, have also been getting the stick from the governor of River State um, with his recent statewide broadcast. Um, it seems that uh, uh, he's going after the, the supporters of uh, Atiku's presidential campaign in, in River State. Um, these are PDP members. Uh, recently, uh, um, one of Wiki's uh, right-hand men, those were the men who is uh, in his inner circle, those who move with him you know, from place to place. Uh, former Senator Lee Meba uh, accused the governor of engaging in anti-party activities um, by inviting uh, the terrible men in court to come to River State, saying that that is promotion of um, the APC presidential candidate. Um, and he said it was anti-party. So it, it seems that uh, even within the PDP in River State, um, uh, there seems to be some fracas with those perceived to be Atiku's men now uh, becoming the enemies of the governor of, uh, of River State. And um, also, that's number one. Number two, the River's APC, uh, the jittery in a way, they've had to release a statement and to say that, uh, uh, you know, t uh, uh, Wiki wants to protect himself after 2023. Um, so, so these are two dynamics. Just quickly, can you talk to about the, the, the situation and how should he approach those who are within his party, the PDP, who are working for Atiku? Well, um, the truth is uh, some of the people with uh, Wiki and PDP will be G3 and will be afraid for their political future. If at the end of the day, we can take, I mean, uh, goes to join the APC. Because the way he's approaching it today, I'm not too sure he's doing it in the larger interest <coughs> of his uh, party, the PDP, but principally for his own personal interest, without carrying along the lieutenant, the senator, the House of Rep member, commissioners, and whatever. And so they will be asking themselves, what is going to become of us if eventually the governor joins the APC. Are we also going to be equally accommodated? The way a Mary Pablo will be accommodated if you cross uh, uh, the carpet. That might be the reason why you find out that there's a lot of disquiet, that there's a lot of um, uh, arrestiveness within the uh, PDP uh, political party in uh, Governor Wicke's uh, state. And why should not uh, blame them? Because it is their future that is at stake. For the PDP that has not uh, considered this uh, campaign council in Rivers and what have they, I should think 
they are merely giving of no wiki, uh, enough rope uh, to hang himself to society, or enough time to rethink about his uh, flag with the APC as a political party. But if you ask me, most times, the PDP will look at the uh, Governor Wicke, the uh, camp APC, as a good reason uh, to bad rubbish. Because, or why do I say this? Atiku is a very, very experienced politician. He also knows the terrain very well. Look at the massive took, uh, step that he took by appointing Okoa as his vice presidential flag uh, bearer. For me, that has considerably weakened Wiki in the Niger Delta uh, region. And the uh, Delta state is equally a very popular state that turns, over, that turns out very large uh, votes. So you should also remember that the election in this part of the world is not um, by free will. People merely go in there and purchase the voters, buy the voters, and then they vote for them. I like the Atiku Abaka and the PTP have more than enough resources to undermine wicked in the river state by putting in a lot of money to buy the voters when the 2003 elections have come. And of course, too, data state money is also there. When you put the resources of data state and then the, the resources in the hands of Alaji Atiku Abaka, it's going to be a very, very Akulian race for both the PTP and the APC. In reverse. But what is at stake really is the future of the different politicians in both the APC and then the PDP in River State. All right. Uh, we stick with um, uh, with the with the punch newspaper this morning. Yeah, Tunde Kolori, the CDS yesterday, um, Lucky Rabo General, uh, announced that uh, uh, five persons and one accomplice or enabler had been arrested uh, in connection with your attacks and killings. Um, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think we should thank God that eventually that uh, uh, the government has announced the arrest of uh, those who went and carried out that sadly attack on the Catholic Church in Owo. I know a little bit of Owo, and I know that that Catholic Church is situated in the center of the city, in fact, not too far from the upper palace. I have been wondering, since that attack took place, how it will be possible for the attacker to walk into the heart of the city, carry out the attack that they did, and just walk away without being arrested, without being uh, apprehended, without anybody putting obstacles on their way. It could only have happened if there was an insider, if there were collaborators within the city, if there were people who guided and who colluded with those uh, attackers. So thank God they've been arrested now. The question again would now be, who is going to take credit for the arrest of uh, uh, these people? The Amateku people have been saying that uh, right from the very moment the attack uh, was carried out and concluded, that they've been, they been trailing the people. Now they, in fact, uh, got one of the vehicles that the attackers uh, brought to the crime and sent. You will also remember that both Pastor Yedepo of the Chapel uh, they said that uh, he has uh, looked at his crystal ball and uh, found that um, the attacker will be arrested uh, uh, within uh, one week. And of course, too, the chief of uh, defense staff or thereabouts is coming out to say that it is one Islamic State West Africa and the collusion, or the collaborative efforts between the different security agencies that led to the arrest or apprehension of the people. Well, Notwithstanding, may have uh, played a key role in the arrest of the people. The thing we should congratulate the security people for is the actual eventual arrest of the people. Because to, to spill the blood of 40 innocent people without justifiable cause and allow the people to walk away, as it has happened in different parts of the country, in many states of the federation, wouldn't be good for us as a nation. Nobody goes into a church, into a mosque, to shed people's blood, and they not have the wrath of God visited on them. Even in war situations, when people run to churches, when they run to mosques and all that, they are spared because the churches and mosques, hospitals, and the whatever uh, places, the Red Cross may have designated as um, 
a camp are considered to be sacred places that should never be touched by any right thinking um, uh, individual. But let me also say this that our people should now learn to begin to play a key role in apprehending whoever may have attacked or carried out any um, a terrorist activities in any part of the country. I say this because if what happened in Owa's happened, if the taxi drivers, if the Okada riders, if the individuals had brought out their vehicles and used it to seal up all the roads that lead in and out of our war, and if the different people within that vicinity had brought out their cutlasses, their dang guns, and people begin to throw stones at those attackers and all that, it would have disorganized, it would have disorganized them. It would have made it difficult for them to escape from the crime scene. But too many times, is it that uh, people will bring out their, their phones and begin to record uh, whatever crimes or whatever incidents are taking place, or they run inside their rooms and hide under their bed, leaving their kids and kids uh, to be uh, killed by all these uh, terrorists and violent people that we have all over the place. Mm -hmm. We should be our own first line of defense, okay. our own primary and security okay. people uh, uh, before we begin to look at the security line. Uh, uh, but there, there are some, some view, some people feel that uh, Omoteku were the ones who went after these men. Um, we don't know how true that is because, of course, the CDS talked about them being apprehended a bit far from from. Uh, from Ondo State. But what, what are your thoughts on, on the role of local policing, um, you know, as far as nipping such incidents in the bud is concerned? When you look at what's happening in Benue State, for instance, with the Tom asking for guns, um, it seems that Motekun played a role of some sort in what has now become, a, 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 you know, a, a good step in solving this whole uh, incident. So I want you to speak about this local policing and vigilantism around the country. Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't subscribe to the idea that individuals should begin to carry weapons. Uh, individuals carry weapons has never helped or tried to uh, mitigate or given any group of people a community or a society peace. In the United States, virtually everybody carry guns and uh, in some of these other European countries and war have but as he had the situation, as it guarantees security for terrorists uh, striking and then uh, killing people in churches, in shopping malls, and different places, the answer is no. I would rather subscribe to the community police and to state police. For God's sake, if a local government wants to have its own police, let them have it. If a university, a polytechnic, or even a secondary school want to have their own police to protect themselves, let them have it. Whatever states also want to have their own private police, let them have it. And then what we require to do is to amend the law, do, I mean, um, provide very strict guidelines and ensure that whatever institutions, whatever organizations would have their own private police, abide by whatever rules and regulations may be put down, and that there are stringent uh, laws to control the activities of um, all these uh, different policies that we have recommended for different layers and uh, classes of um, uh, people in the society. The fear, as of today, is that when the state begins to have their police, when the local government begins to have their police, it will be abused by politicians. They will use it uh, against their political opponents and war after. But the question you will ask yourself is, is the federal police not being used by individuals, by governors, by the federal government, even by the people working with those security people against the perceived enemy, the answer is no, that they have been abused. All that we should put in place is that when people abuse their authority, or the power given to them, or the weapon that has been given to them to protect the people, and they tell it on people, we should ensure that the law uh, takes its uh, regular course in bringing such people to book, so as to serve as a deterrent. So whoever they want to follow in their footsteps, there will always be abuses. Abuses happen in the U.S., it happens in Canada, it happens in Britain. It will always happen in any society. But the difference has always been bringing those who abuse their power and their authority or whatever leverage they have on people, bringing them to book speedily 
without any fear of favor, will mitigate or elevate or at least a kind of a, a insulate society from one ton of disease that uh, having different layers of police may be bringing onto the society. All right. All right. There's a certain Idris Ojo whose name was mentioned uh, in that speech by the uh, chief of defense staff. And people are, are saying, hey, you know, this is uh, someone who uh, was named as one of those who escaped from Kujay prison. What is his name doing in such a speech? But uh, I'm sure that it'll become clearer to people as time goes on. Uh, 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 Mr. Kolowale, let's stay with the punch because um, the paper gives some coverage on its front page to the latest as far as that equi collapsed building is concerned. And quite a lot of people have probably forgotten about this case. But if you look at the bottom left corner or, or right corner of the uh, front page, the headline there, Corona Index, Regulatory Bodies Over Ikoi Building Collapse, is, uh, can be seen. It says that the, the chief, uh, mag the coroner, rather, the chief magistrate, Oyetade Komalafe, on Tuesday, attributed the number, November 1, 2021, Ikoi 21-story building collapse uh, to the negligence negligence in adhering to the best practices uh, by relevant agencies uh, responsible for approval and supervision of the product, project. Uh, he also added that the building's density and setback uh, on the site showed gross violations of the Lagos State building uh, regulations. But he, uh, he also said that, uh, uh, you know, that the project board, which should have boldly shown the sensitive and important information of the names and addresses of the professionals who carried out the project were deliberately not provided. And according to Komolafe, he says approving and supervising agencies did not sanction the offender, suggesting that they were compromised, is what he's saying. Your thoughts, reaction? Well, it's uh, rather unfortunate that uh, it is when the head has been blown off that we as our people who begin to weep uh, like the crop, like the crop of time. Too many times, buildings have collapsed in Lagos and some other parts of the country, and the regulatory agencies have been indicted for such building uh, collapses. But since all the indictment, what steps are we taking to ensure that this thing does not repeat itself? It would appear to me that we merely go back to sleep immediately if such incidents are concluded, either by the coronal or by the courts, whereas it ought not to be. With regards to the Ikoi property, also look at the antecedents of the man. In some other parts of the world, when somebody approached authorities uh, with regards to carrying out such gigantic projects, a good uh, regulatory agency will look at the man's antecedent, the resources at its disposal, and the available equipment, expertise, that has to execute the project. We collect that the man once posted, the man who was carrying out the COI project, in a newspaper publication at IRA, that he was asked to do a one story building. In a place like in, in London, and rather than do the two-story building, he went up to, to, to three. He actually did three. But later, the authorities in there had on them. He also mentioned some things he did in South Africa. We didn't quite comply with the regulatory uh, authorities and uh, directive to him with the project that he carried out in there. So if you have a man who has openly been saying that he flouts the law, he defies the regulatory authorities, then the building control board should have been more stringent in supervising his project. When you also look at the height that that uh, building was going into, I should think that the regulatory authorities should have made it a point of duty to station some of their men on the project site 24-7 to ensure that it is what they have approved for him or for the contractor, or for the builder that they comply with. But they approved certain number of story buildings for him. The man took it above that. And uh, they find it difficult to get him to comply with what they have approved for him. They went in there, sealed the property, the man reopened it, and continued the building without the regulatory authority 
doing anything. I asked him my own opinion. Immediately the building was sealed, and the man went back to to unseal it and continue the project. The authority are taking the police in there to arrest him, and then uh, uh, prefer charges against him in court so that he could face the law and justify his actions. But that didn't happen. As we got whether they were compromised or they were not compromised, we will not try to what happened, and I'm not too sure that the corona has been able to put his or her finger on the fact that money on investment do indeed uh, change hand in um, what led to the collapse of that building. So whatever we say with regards to that will be mere speculation. But too many times we have seen that happen. We have seen the regulatory authorities unable to put their foot down with regards to many collapsed buildings, with regards to even buildings that are under construction presently. And you ask yourself, why is it that it is difficult to put their foot down? Could it be that most times they are compromised? Could it be that they don't have the means or the resources uh, to do whatever uh, control the law has uh, empowered them to do? Could it be that most of the people who engage in building these uh, structures are more powerful than the regulatory uh, bodies? The bottom line is the blame will still lie with the authorities. The buck stops on the governor's table because whatever happened in the state not only affects uh, the regulatory authorities, it also affects all the citizens of the state and because the governor is the chief law officer, the father of the state, he gets much of the blame because the box stops uh, at his uh, table. So as much as we whip the regulatory authorities, the building control board, we should also be able to say that the governor has not lived up to the expectation All right. of the legal state people's, uh, okay. I mean, of the legal state people. All right, interesting. Uh, so you're saying that uh, ultimately the box stops on the table of the governor of Lagos State exactly. and of course the regulatory exactly. bodies in Lagos State. Uh, interesting one. Like you said, um, the lives will never be, be brought back and the, the deed, deed has already been done. Tunde Koloe, it's been interesting having you, Barrister, on the program this morning. We look forward to having you again soon. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks for having me. Do have a lovely day. You too, you too, we appreciate it. Um, today is an interesting day, it happens to be the 10th of August. We'll look at what happened and transpired this day in history. We'll be back. <laughs>